I'd like to welcome everybody to the planning board meeting that's scheduled for November 21st, 2011. And I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, has everyone had a chance to take a look at our agenda for today's meeting? <clears throat> Is there any, are any comments or changes? Move to approve. We have a motion second. to approve and we have a second. Okay, all in favor, indicate by, indicate by saying aye. All right. Uh, all opposed, no. Motion carries. <clears throat> we also had an opportunity to take a look at the minutes of our last meeting. And are there any corrections or additions there, too? Okay, hearing none, do I have a motion to approve? So move. Okay, a second? Second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. Motion carries. Okay, the next item um, on our agenda for today's meeting is the discussion of lighting standards to be included in the zoning ordinance. Um, I think everyone received Friday uh, two emails. Actually, the latter one's the one that we want to uh, address today of proposed language revisions as well as a uh, spreadsheet that shows um, comparison between what uh, we are now proposing or staff is now proposing versus uh, what the city of Asheville has adopted versus Chatham County. And that's down in uh, Pittsburgh, if, for those that don't know, a little bit west of Raleigh. <clears throat> and also uh, it measures uh, what we're proposing versus Jackson County's ordinance. Uh, Debbie, if I might call on you uh, to walk through this with us, I'd appreciate it. And uh, I think, uh, I think first, if you would, let's start with the spreadsheet. Okay. And I was talking before we met up here with some of our members. Uh, uh, need to emphasize that uh, what we're proposing as of today <clears throat> is based on um, initial measurements of foot candles and lumens not a maintained measurement and you you can walk through that with us and we'll go over the reasons why that uh, we'd like to stay with the initial measurement instead of going out after a period of a couple of years or six months or whatever <coughs> and having to remeasure the uh, light and intensity <coughs> at these locations but go ahead please yes sir um, well, we were um, wanting to go with initial foot candles simply because um, what we're addressing is new installations so that um, rather than, than writing the ordinance and maintained and then doing the calculations for initial when they first build them, we just um, are going with initial <coughs> within the regulations themselves. Um, maintain foot candles takes into account um, dirt and uh, and grime on lenses as well as is uh, um, the the lumens decreasing over time with use so uh, uh, depending on the the type of uh, light that you're looking at maintained is 0.62 or 0.74 of uh, initial so um, that's why when you look at the other uh, jurisdictions their um, their maintained foot candles are, are um, less than <clears throat> ours are about 150 uh, percent of theirs because ours are initial and theirs are maintained and um, I looked at these uh, various ordinances um, maximums at property lines uh, vehicular canopies dusted on security lights street lights um, parking and sales and display areas within those those various ordinances um, for the maximum at property lines, we're proposing 0.75 initial foot candles. Asheville and Chatham County are um, both 0.5 <coughs> maintained. Uh, we're proposing a higher, a three uh, initial foot candles at public uh, rights of way. That is to allow a little bit better vi visibility if you've got drives to turn into something that you need to see uh, right there, then, then we're um, proposing a, a little bit higher uh, level there on the public rights of way. Uh, for vehicular canopies, um, Asheville has uh, 20 maintained foot candles, Chatham County 24, um, and then we're proposing 30 um, of the initial foot candles. 
uh, Jackson County, it's it's hard to really compare them in with the others because their their system is is uh, radically different than than what most of the other ordinances we've looked at have. Um, they have a prescriptive and a performance method, and um, within their ordinance, mm -hmm. they have offered many different ways to to comply with with their ordinance. Uh, dust to dawn security lights. Um, we're proposing a maximum of 95 lumens and a maximum pole height of 25 feet. And um, the pole would be mounted uh, more than 12, or the, the light would be mounted more than uh, 12 feet high to be regulated. Uh, Asheville has a maximum of 9,500 lumens and 25 foot high, uh, but they do allow um, cutoff, or they require full cutoff in residential zones, but they, they allow um, cutoff and on decorative posts and other areas. And Chatham County has a full cutoff if greater than 2,000 lumens. For street lights, we're proposing uh, in residential areas, that'd be a maximum of 9,500 lumens, and in commercial areas, a maximum of 50,000 lumens, and that's the same as um, Asheville's. We're proposing that a um, full cutoff is required um, unless it is 18 feet high or less, and then you could use a, um, a glare reduction to have a cutoff. And in parking lots, we're proposing a uh, maximum of uh, six initial foot candles, a maximum of 37 feet high. Uh, Asheville's and Chatham counties are the same, and they have a minimum and then they have a uniformity ratio of four to one so that um, for a low to medium activity area a minimum of 0.7 foot candles would equal an average of 2.8 maintained foot candles and in a high activity area their minimum of 0.9 would equal an average of 3.6 maintained and then in sales and display areas, we're <clears throat> proposing a 25-foot um, initial, I mean, 25 initial foot candles and a maximum height of 37 feet. <clears throat> um, Asheville is 20 maintained with a maximum of 37 feet, and Chatham County is 24 maintained with a maximum of 37 feet. Okay, before we go on uh, to the language that's proposed, let's, let's, let everybody, let's visit this a little bit while we're on this chart. Does anyone have any questions or comments related to what's, this is a snapshot of, I guess, what we're proposing <coughs> in the left-hand column versus others. Is there any questions specific to that before we move on? Debbie, with regard to par parking lots, is there any uh, glare reduction provision that we've got um, we would require full cutoff I have to look We require a full cutoff where it's more than um, 1,250 lumens with a cutoff allowed uh, less than that. Where is that in the draft, Debbie? That is on page 2E2. Two 
On page two? Yeah, I'm sorry, page four, page four. E2. 2E2. Two. Two. Okay. <clears throat> and that's measured per, per fixture? Yes. Do we know with regard to vehicular canopies, the 30 foot candles, do we have any idea what the, once they burn in and once you get the dirt and everything else, what the average would be from 30? Uh, it depends on the type of light. If you multiply it by 0.74 or 0.62, then that's what the maintained would be. So about 60 percent, 60 to 70 percent. Yeah. But it, but it didn't actually maintain per se. That's just the way it would end up being yes. based on your two factors. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm um, curious about several um, aspects here. Um, <clears throat> again, getting back, if we could look at the maximum at property line, please. Uh, and by the way, I really appreciate uh, the staff doing the chart. I think it's very helpful. Um, 0.75 initial again versus 0.5 maintained for Asheville. And I guess the assumption there is that at a point the, um, the lumin luminaire, if you will, will be uh, opaque in nature. It will be frosted or dirty as you say and so on. So. A 0.75 initial foot candle situation could actually end up to be less than 0.5 maintained. <laughs> Am I interpreting that? It um, well, it, de it depends on how dirty it gets and, and you know the dimming over time. But um, I don't have a calculator with me. But um, it would be if you took between either one the your, two generally yeah if you took either one of your two factors what was it 0.6 and 0.72 point, point 0.62 and 0 0.74 0 0.74 multipliers yeah so there's a reduction there yes in the long term exactly theoretically okay yeah that's 0.55 as it yeah. turns out yeah why why did we um, 0.74 would be a, a 0 0.55 mm -hmm. maintained foot candles Six two. <clears throat> or point four six five. On the vehicular canopy, uh, getting back to Scott's question, the um, the thirty initial. I just want to make sure this is not a subtle and this is a, a really tangible. Um, illumination standard that that if we look at the um, IESNA standards they of course the terminology is different and this is what's befuddling me it's not just the numbers but it's the terminology it's the modifier of the number and they use um, average illuminance with light soundings of 10 foot candles and then we're using maximum average horizontal illuminance is that the same I think so mm -hmm. okay but we're not sure okay. um, so the question is if we're looking at 30 initial foot candles however whatever modifier we use Are we going to apply the, those same two factors, whichever one you choose, the 7.4, the 0.74, and the 0.6, what again? 6.2. 6.2. We apply those. In the long term, <coughs> the luminance would be less than 30, but we don't know how close it would be to 20 necessarily. Point it could seven, be greater than 20. 0.74 is 
point two two twenty twenty two. Point two. Yeah. Right, yeah. Point six two. So what what did you come up? I'm sorry? Eighteen point six for point six two. Eighteen point six. Okay. Okay. So the so the twenty strikes right in the middle, basically, you, depending on which factor you use. You know, one's less, one's a little higher. So twenty is the norm, the median. Okay. And the or thirty factors? is is the norm. Huh? Thirty initial would be the middle of of that for maintained. Yeah, that's one of yeah, another way of saying it. <clears throat> Uh, we heard a lot from the engineer <coughs> that was advising us <coughs> and uh, about the uh, two different methods, prescription and performance, and I was just curious why, why we're not u using those. Well, as I went through Jackson County's ordinance, it was um, it's a little bit confusing. There was a lot of shoulds and we recommends, but, um, and they, they offered um, ways to, to, to calculate that um, didn't necessarily require a lighting engineer. You take your square footage of property and you multiply it uh, um, by the type of, of use that it is and, and the number of entryways and then you get the number of watts that you can have on the property. And it really didn't address as thoroughly what we were trying to, to do as the way most everyone else is doing it with, you know, you, you have a certain amount of lumens and you have a cutoff or a full cutoff. It, it uh, was, was a lot more vague. Okay, that said, <coughs> if, uh, and with respect to the woulds and the shoulds and the recommends and so on, uh, would, would we have been able to uh, fabricate our wording to be more definitive than Jackson County's, uh, a better job, if you will, <coughs> and still have the two different methods to give our, own, our property owners the flexibility that we had talked about? Could that be done? It could be done. It's it's just that that it pretty much abandons the normal way that everybody else is is writing their ordinances, and um, it's not necessarily a good idea to follow the the one that that's that's the odd man out. The one that what? That's the the odd one that that no one else is doing it that way. So the Asheville and Chatham County ordinance are, are, are more, the way they're crafted are more typical, is what we're saying. Of yes, the they're, they're all now. addressing lumens and foot candles and, and the, it, the types uh, of fixtures. Did you look at um, um, I've gone blank. Carry, um, carry, carry. Well, okay. carry or uh, Woodfin. Uh, <coughs> we, yeah, we did look at Woodfin. <coughs> and what did they do? I, I can't tell you right off hand. It's been a long time that, ago that we looked at Woodfin. Um, okay. Um, I think we're all trying to. I didn't get hold of this till <coughs> Friday night. I'm up at six this morning trying to read things and learn what the attorneys were doing and so on. Um, <coughs> so it's a steep learning curve right now, fast moving tar target. On the dusted on lights, um, <coughs> it appears, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but it appears that they're are no requirements now for dusted on lights that are 12 or less feet <coughs> above the ground on a pole or if they're mounted anywhere else. 
that is a proposal we looked at um, enforcement issues basically <coughs> um, if someone goes out and and buys a, a light at Lowe's and puts it up we will likely not have any idea um, that they've done that whereas if they do something that's over 12 feet high the progress energy is probably involved and and they've assured us that that um, you know whatever we pass that's the the type of lighting that they're going to be putting in so it, it's <coughs> it's a, a matter of being able to enforce it I mean what are we uh, the lights now that uh, progress energy is putting out what type kind of lumens or comparison um, they offer a wide variety of, of lumens and and um, uh, they go from non cut off all the way up to full cut off and I think their their poles start <coughs> at 12 feet and, and go up to 39 for street I'm just I'm just trying to figure out how what what kind of effect that this is going to have on on the lighting that's out there now um, I think it'll have a, a big impact on the lighting that's out there now because a lot of what they put out is is um, <clears throat> not not cut off or full cut yeah. off. That's the big thing, the cut off. Yeah, we want it to, to <laughs> shine down on the property right. that it's meant to light and not out to, to adjoining property owners. I'm just having a hard time comparing 9,500 lumens. How much light is that? Yeah. It's a little more than 100 watts, approximately um, uh, 9550 is, is um, I mean, 1600, I'm sorry, 1600 watts is about, <laughs> I've been looking at this too long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 1600 lumens is about 100 watt. So that's four or 500 watts then mm -hmm. and you can't really yeah. cross them it depends on the type of light it's a lot of light <laughs> it's it's bright it's a lot of light if if we could get back to the the, the dusted on um, that's not considered here and you say well there's an enforcement problem because we don't know when people are are putting them up right to my way of thinking that, that <clears throat> that's no different than the uh, vacation rental coding we just passed um, where somebody decides to uh, rent their house out on uh, for weekdays or weekends or something of that nature you have no way of knowing that so what's the difference I don't think there is yeah, there's no difference. Yeah. So, if if it's good for one, um, why why can't it be good for this? Um, I may not be understanding your point since we well, allowed them in all districts. Right. Let me re rather than regulating them. Yeah. Let me rephrase you. Uh, if I understand your rationale, the reason why you're not imparting any standards for dusted on lights at 12 or less feet on a pole or mounted anywhere else is that in your mind it's an enforcement issue mm -hmm. right and that and you just acknowledge that we wouldn't know if people were putting these lights up and you wouldn't have a way to enforce it and so my question is well it's a very very much of a parallel with the vacation rental issue you wouldn't know when people were starting to rent their houses out for vacation rentals there's no requirement for them to report to you that they've done that but it's an allowed use everywhere so we don't need to know if they're doing it no. still though um, I, I mean your enforcement of the issue is no different for that than it is uh, than it would be for this but I guess the get to the bigger issue the overwhelming um, number of emails and the public surge that you've heard on all of this uh, has to do with dusted on security lights in general and uh, it's not just pole mounted and um, 
I don't see, um, I just don't understand why, why we, we, we were going in a good direction and, and it just seems we're doing a turnabout here. And uh, you can mount these lights on barns, on fences, <clears throat> and, uh, and the citizens are, are complaining about not what's about to happen, they're complaining about what exists now. I mean, they're concerned for what's going forward and, and they're happy that something's being done. But it would seem to me that um, 12 feet's pretty high off the ground. And why we're not considering that is, um, I just don't, I don't quite understand that. And, um, I think that's uh, one of the major issues. I'll, I'll uh, yield for right now, Mr. Chairman, and if anybody else has any comments, I have some more on other ones. Okay. <clears throat> well, I will say this just to clear things up. Uh, whatever, we, whatever we arrive at addresses going forward. It doesn't, you know, everybody's vested where they are today, correct, John? Yes. In other words, we're not going to... Uh, County will not be out there uh, <clears throat> asking those <clears throat> current business owners or residential owners <clears throat> to change your lighting based on what we come up. I think everybody knows that, but I just wanted to kind of clear that up. You know, this this is a going forward piece of language that we're trying to craft here. You okay. would only be required to change existing lighting if if you do something that requires a building permit. Is that correct? Well, the zoning ordinance already has a section in it for nonconformance. Mm -hmm. And what we would do is apply that same section to lighting so that anything you um, have that is nonconforming, um, if it's dis discontinued for 180 days, <clears throat> then it could not be put back. But if it is replaced within that 180 <clears throat> days, it could be put back exactly as it was. Um, not made to be more nonconforming, but in the instance of your, um, you know, your convenience store, if if you uh, tore down that canopy, as long as you put it, uh, started putting it back, pulled your permits in 180 days, you could put it back as it had been. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But you you <coughs> took out the, um, or or at least we don't see any reference to a sunset provision, a five-year sunset provision. So are you saying that the non-conforming, and I haven't read them in detail yet, but uh, let me just ask you this way. Is it possible that a property owner within the non-conforming use provisions could go beyond five years? Yes, we took out that. Um, section I talked with um, Shannon Tuck in, uh, in uh, city and she had in her presentation to you said that we have a provision in our ordinance where anything that's leased from progress energy in five years would have to be replaced and be made to be made conforming um, when I looked at the language in the Asheville ordinance it is not just leased things that are required to be made conforming but it's all open bottom utility type lights that would have to be made uh, conforming whether it's leased or it's um, privately owned. Um, our attorney's office strongly advised that we not have leased open bottom utility type lights being required to be made conforming and not all of them because that is not equal treatment under the law and, and is something that we should never do. So that's why we took that out. Um, the, your use of the term um, open bottom, that brings up something here. Um, If we could go, uh, of course, now uh, with the attorneys uh, talking.
take on this. The, what I'm going to talk about has all been wiped out, so I'm not sure what to ask. Uh, did you, the staff, have a chance to reconcile your draft with the attorneys? Uh, yes, that's the one that I sent out at the end of the day Friday. Um, if you're talking about all the part that was stricken in um, on pa starting on page 3B, 1, 2, and 3, mm -hmm. is that the part you were going to ask about? Yeah. <clears throat> because um, what we say in the beginning of B on applicability, the one, two, and three are simply a, a reutterance of that and redundant, and that's why they recommended just just striking all that. A, a question on uh, paragraph B on page three, uh, the attorney's version. Um, I, oh, and I, let me say first off, the red is what um, staff had changed prior to the attorney's comments, and the attorney's <clears throat> comments were, were made in blue. Okay, good. That's the way I took that. Um, the, the first line of uh, paragraph B on page three uh, reads, applicability, lighting standards shall apply to new uh, and, and is now worded commercial and industrial development, et cetera. And the word development's been used um, from the beginning. And I, and I was just wondering, would, would it be better to use the word construction in lieu of development? To me, development connotes a development. And could there not be new commercial and industrial construction that is not a development that needs to be approved or by the Board of Adjustment or by us or whatever? Well, development um, implies construction, but um, it, it would be uh, not necessarily what you'd think of as, as a building if there was uh, an existing business out there already and they decided to expand and put in a whole new parking lot. That would be development. Okay. But if they go in and replace fixtures on an existing okay. parking lot, do they have to bring them in compliance? Would that be development? Um, that is covered under the, the non-compliance issue that I talked about before. If you're replacing something that's non-conforming, it can be replaced if it's done within 180 days. If you take it down and you don't replace it within 180 days, what goes in then must conform. So if you have the old, we used to call them mercury vapor type lights and one of them has to be replaced, you can replace it with the same type of technology. Yes. <clears throat> um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to hear from the attorney on why uh, they did what they did. Okay, Mike, could you help us with that, please? Mm -hmm. All I have to do is ask. I think, okay. uh, you know, I, I always believe that less is more. I mean, we look at this, and clearly the intent is to aim this uh, at commercial and industrial. I think if we put in the language uh, residential, non-residential uh, installation, and it just the, the references are just muddy. Mm -hmm. They just seem very muddy. We just tried to clean it up to make sure that everyone was just focused clearly on new commercial and industrial. Um, and if you just focused on those, as set forth in the beginning of paragraph B, the other, the remaining language is just surplusage. I don't think it helps at all. I think it's just muddies the water. So we're just trying to aim it, uh, as requested, just at the uh, commercial and industrial only. Mm -hmm. And the 12 foot and under aspect is, you know, clearly uh, residential. Mm -hmm. Well, when I read it this well, over the weekend and also this morning again, it looked like that's what you were doing. Cleaned it up. Yeah, just anything else. Yeah, I, again, just less is more. Just trying to clean it up, make yeah. it more succinct. Does anyone else have any comments related to the chart? 
course, I don't, you know, the chart translates over to the narrative that we're going to go over in just a second as well. But uh, <clears throat> if not, let's go over the narrative real quick, please. And I'll just go, uh, go through the changes that were made. As I said, uh, red is, is um, and this red and blue is all changes from what you saw at the last planning board meeting. Red is what staff had, had proposed changing, and then blue is what the attorneys proposed changing. And um, we've, on page 3B, we pretty much covered that um, change. Under exemptions, the attorney's office recommended uh, adding temporary lighting use for public purposes, including but not limited to highway construction and public uh, utility repairs. Uh, the intent is certainly to exclude those from this requirement. Uh, so we added that to C on uh, page 4E. We uh, changed uh, an and to an or for uh, your <coughs> maximum at property lines. And then um, one II, the maximum average light level uh, for developed area of the project will be 0.45 foot candles. That was uh, in a response to a, a couple engineers who, who said that they thought the point, the, the six foot candles, um, again, we're talking initial, would, um, was a little bit high. Are, are you saying 0.45 or 4.5? 4.5. Okay. <clears throat> On uh, E2, we changed uh, semi-cutoff fixture to cut off. Our, our intent had been cut off, and that was just a, a misstatement that we had in a, a couple places here. The, the and, intent and was the to difference allow. again between full cutoff and cutoff. Um, full cutoff does not allow any light above um, 90 degrees from the the fixture, the luminaire. A cutoff allows 2.5% above the 90 degree mark, and semi cutoff allows 5%. Debbie, why was the reduction from 6.0 to 4.5? Um, we just had a, a couple engineers that, that yeah. said that, that it was a little bit high and not in line with uh, what other ordinances allowed. And so in looking if this is at the time of installation, that 4.5 foot candles could go down to three? Mm -hmm. It would go down to, um, um, that sounds right, mm -hmm. yes. And then um, in looking at, say, parking lot lighting for um, Asheville and then display areas, their um, average would be... Um, <coughs> low to medium activity would be 2.8 <coughs> maintained and a high activity level that's uh, like a shopping mall kind of thing their average would be uh, 3.6 maintained okay on i and and ii in i the terminology is the maximum light <coughs> level at any point in II, the terminology is the maximum average light level for the developed area. Those, th those are very different, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. And meant so, to be that way. Yes. You would take um, the, all the light levels in a whole developed area for your average. So there are, would be maximums much higher than that. And then uh, for at the property line on I, that is anywhere along the property line. It could <coughs> not be more than 0.75. Okay. Debbie, that's when we saw the engineer brought those the diagrams. That's those outer rings. Yes. He was showing. Yes. So the intensity in the middle. And as those went out, we were seeing those lower levels. So that's I, is that outer ring somewhat? I would, yes, okay. where it hits the, the property line okay. on the, the mm -hmm. edge. Um, under five, page five, four, vehicular canopies. 
we changed that um, 40 lumens per square foot of canopy to a um, maximum average of 30 foot candles. In five, we added the um, Dust to Dawn security lights mounted higher than 12 feet um, to be those that are regulated. <clears throat> On, um, on paragraph four on page five, where we talk about the 30 foot candles, if we're going to be consistent with your chart on the vehicular canopies, wouldn't you want to have in the wording 30 initial foot candles? Um, in the definition of foot candles, we say that all of the references to foot candles are initial so that mm. all the way through we just say foot candles and don't don't say initial okay. again good point thank you <coughs> in uh, page five number six we changed um, again commercial to commercial and industrial areas at the uh, suggestion of the attorney's office we added um, through here on the dust to dawn and, and other lighting types uh, how the height would be measured. So we added um, above the, the lowest adjacent grade to several points through here as that, that would be where the measurement for height would be to the light. What's the relationship on seven? What's the relationship to six foot candles on the 4.5 that was reduced before? Should those be similar or is that okay? The six foot candles, um, the 4.5 is the average for the, um, the whole project developed area. Six foot candles, it, um, because it's a parking area and there are some security issues uh, would be allowed to be a, a brighter intensity <coughs> that like if we're like an ATM or certain specific security um, well that doesn't address the, okay. the an ATM but any outdoor parking area if you've got a, a from a convenience store all the <coughs> way up to, to a shopping mall and again, the horizontal is it is it is it grayed? It's on the surface. Yes. Measured across the asphalt or whatever. Yes. And we added for um, page six, number seven, and number eight, a uh, thirty-seven foot height limit for those lights. We we had not had a, a height limit stated in here before. And uh, page six F, the attorney's office recommended that rather than qualified professional, we state licensed engineer as those are the ones that conceal a plan and changed uh, semi cutoff to cutoff in number one. And then number two, we struck uh, commercial and new development simply because that was a leftover from when. Uh, we initially drafted this and it was intended to only address new commercial development. And then uh, page seven, five, we um, struck for outdoor commercial sales. Again, that was, was left from when we initially drafted to only apply to new commercial development. Okay, thanks. I have one question. If we have some new schools, and if we have out new outdoor fields that require nighttime lighting, mm -hmm. I don't know where they would fall, or if we've considered that in you know our definitions and exceptions and our exemptions. Um, I know we have the two new schools being built, but I mean as we move forward and grow in our parks and rec. You know, mm -hmm. those kinds of nighttime lighting situations, I just don't know how they've been thought about for this. It, it the public hasn't. use, but it's not really. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure we fully address that here.
the, the lighting uh, standards, they do apply to commercial and industrial, so I don't think they would apply but, to, yeah. to okay. I wasn't, government. You know. I think that's, that would have to be our interpretation. Can you repeat that, Debbie? Said the standards apply to new commercial and industrial, so they would not apply to, to public school. Okay. Does anyone have anything else? Questions, comments? Under administration and enforcement, just for example, if, uh, if we were designing a new residential subdivision and we could um, prove that, that our lighting was going to be um, in compliance, say, through Progress Energy specs, and we could show the proposed lighting on our site plan, would that be sufficient for uh, waiving the requirement for an engineered lighting plan? The zoning administrator would have to look at, at all of your documentation, and if he thought it did uh, show that you met all the requirements, he could waive that requirement. If he was um, not certain, it could go to the Board of Adjustment for a public hearing, and then they would also have the ability to waive that requirement. Question on uh, page five, paragraph six, triple I. Uh, last, se <coughs> last sentence, um, the last part of the last sentence where it says the luminaire may consist of a s cutoff fixture if the zoning administrator or board of adjustment determines that proper glare reduction measures are taken. How, what will those two entities use as guidelines to determine? How will that be done? Well, it would be the application. Um, the applicant would have to show that, that that has been done, and there's various methods of glare reduction, or it could, um, you know, it could be that there's uh, a, a fencing or screening. You know, there could be ways other than just glare reduction within the, the luminaire itself that could be taken into account. That's why we didn't state just specific measures that could be taken. One last clarification for me, and I, I'm still real disappointed on the dawn to dusk, and I realize I'm the lone salmon going upstream, but um, I just find that disappointing. But are we um, are we now saying, uh, saying, and I just want to make sure I'm clear, are we now saying that for commercial and industrial entities, if, if property owner comes back and wants to put in a whole new light system there's no governance of that if they're replacing a system yeah if there's one would, light out there that's gone bad or got hit with a board or something and they go and replace it there's no governance of that they can put back what they had they, they could not make an, it more non-conforming a non-conforming light or they could do a whole system or they could do a whole system if it's done within 180 days. Generally, if they were putting in a whole new system, they would go for something more energy efficient and it would so be if, at if, least less nonconforming. If their lighting system was upward, it projected all the lighting up from the valley, and you can see it from the mountains, and we're not, and if they do it within the nonconforming requirements of 180 days, we haven't gained a thing then. They can replace what they had before. Then go right within back and do the same days. thing. That just doesn't seem right. Well, I guess, you know, go back and let's talk about where we're, what I guess the commissioners originally directed the planning department to do was new commercial. That's it. I understand. And, and, I mean, we have taken steps past that. I mean, mm -hmm. but I just, I guess, in looking at what had gone on while I was on vacation, I just felt like that, you know, we are, we are taking a step forward and we're talking about new residential. Uh, 
in the future. But I just, there was, I guess the, we've got to kind of weigh, I guess, the, the, the direction that we're going to go into, originally from what the commissioners had told us was just, you know, new commercial. And I just, you know, I mean, obviously as a planning board, you know, the majority of you want to re recommend, you know, whatever direction we need to take, we'll do that. Uh, and I just, you know, I guess that need to have everybody's comment on seeing where we are today because I just, I struggle with going out and telling somebody up Robinson Cove in, in Sandy Mush that they got to take down the barn lot. I just, you know, I, I have a real, I, real ha I really struggle with that. So uh, to get into an amortization, I, I guess a, a five-year amortization schedule and, uh, and sorry, say that we're going to do away with, as I guess has been referred to, mercury vapor lights or street lights uh, that are on private property. I mean, if that's the direction that everybody wants to do, go, obviously that's what we'll do, but I personally can't recommend that at this stage. Mm -hmm. I just can't. Well, I think something else we need to consider also, and uh, I know a couple of years ago we struggled with the uh, hillside development slope ordinance as well. Um, this thing is going to kind of always be a moving target. Presently, we don't have an ordinance. We need a starting point somewhere, which doesn't mean this can't be revisited down the road by future planning boards or, or, or those of us that remain on the planning board. Um, Again, I think this is a starting point. I don't know that, uh, well, we, well, I do know, too, because we went through vacation rentals as well as with Scott's leadership, the uh, slope ordinance. None of us will, none of us, meaning the public included, will never agree totally on what kind of language needs to be in this piece as we move forward. Again, I think we need to look at it as a starting point, and I think we need to get it as close to right as possible. But then it, it needs to evolve, and, of course, assuming that the commissioners um, approve what we recommend, whatever that may be. Um, I, again, it's nothing to say that uh, at the end of 2012 or 13 or whatever that we don't need to revisit some things. Um, I think, Scott, back to the slope and the hillside development ordinance, you know, that's been on the books for somewhere over a year now, but we really hadn't had an opportunity to test it because there hadn't been any development out there. This is somewhat similar, I think, in that regard. So, um, again, we can beat this thing to death uh, and spend all the time you'd like on it. And I do think we need to try to get it as right as possible. But uh, let's keep in mind, uh, it's, it's, once it's uh, approved by the county commissioners, still doesn't mean we can't revisit it at some point in time or that they could ask us to revisit at some point in time. Is that a fair statement? Okay. Does anybody have anything else? Now, I do know, and Joe and I talked about this beforehand a little bit, uh, since this information came out late Friday afternoon, the final version from Mike's office, um, I think some of our members uh, didn't have an opportunity to visit carefully uh, what was being proposed here today and uh, so I'm not so certain that we need to take a poll today to see if we w want to move forward with this language or whether and I'll I'll poll the board in this regard would you like to sit on this uh, for one more meeting before we try to kick it back out for public comment or uh, or move forward with it I, and, and I don't really care uh, again, I'd like to get it as right as possible before we move forward, but uh, if I may, <laughs> Mr. I, Hudgens? I think we ought to move forward. I think we spent enough time on it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Do we? What would we hope to gain at this point? Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm comfortable, I guess is what I'm saying. Joe, I think I know where you are, but go right ahead, well, please. I, I didn't get to see it till Friday night, and I had other obligations for the weekend, so All I right. don't feel I'm doing the commissioners nor the public uh, the due diligence that should be done and so um, I would appreciate some more time to consider it and uh, uh, I, I just think we owe that to the commissioners mm -hmm. and to the public but uh, that's my thought. Michelle? I 
think um, I think the adjustments to I know what you're saying, Joe. But I think the adjustments that they made, the attorneys did, to concisely make this more targeted to commercial industrial makes me feel comfortable moving forward with this in the knowledge that if there was something in the residential realm that needed to be addressed, that I think that would be separate, separately discussed. So I would say after listening today, I feel um, like we should move the, this piece forward as it is and then think about any other concerns that citizens have that aren't related um, to commercial or industrial development. Okay. Can I help you? Yeah, <laughs> I guess. But the reality <laughs> is, though, that nothing will be done for a long, long time if it's passed. I mean, that's... Yeah, that's the reality. Everybody's going to put this aside, and that'll be it. I think, you know, Joe, I, I hear you, but I do have to say that there are a lot of can of worms with residential. And if we even go and start talking about it, I think this, cri this is critical, this particular part to enforce it. Uh, commercial and industrial standards, it would be smart to put it on, put something out there now. But my fear is that when you start going down these roads, I mean, John said it too, um, I really think there's a lot more there that people are going to want to discuss. And we'll be sitting here for four months, and not that that's not okay, but I think getting this on now for these targeted for specific industries makes more sense because I think the long time is going to happen even if we don't move forward with this, just discussing it. So I, and I don't think that you, you can't bring it. I mean, you're a member of, you know, the planning board. So, I mean, if everybody wants to talk about something else, but getting this done and solid, you know, the retaining wall thing, that's, that's a good example. You know, there was a problem. We've got a problem. Let's address it, you know, before something new happens that's going to be a problem. So that's kind of where I sit on that. You know, and that doesn't necessarily mean it won't happen. But I hear, mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying. But the irony of this is that we're not addressing the complaints. No one's complained about commercial and industrial. I, well, well, we I, are. We do have a residential I, piece. Well, I, but it, although I understand the limitations <laughs> yeah. there too, yeah. but we do have a residential piece. And, and, and in that regard, we went beyond what the commissioners have asked us to do. And I respect that. Yeah. And I'm glad we're doing that. Okay. Mr. Hughes. I think moving it forward is probably the right thing to do. Um, you know, no ordinance that's ever been created. I mean, I've, I've been on this board for a long time now and, and I've seen a lot of this stuff come through and the fact is is that number one no one ever one ever gets exactly what they wanted with any of it uh, but the other piece of it too is is that um, this will have an impact uh, I think from a commercial development standpoint from uh, new activities that are going to that are coming into the area I think it will have a very immediate and direct impact um, you know, are there things that, that might be put into it that, that might uh, uh, enhance it? Obviously. But I think all we're doing at this point by moving it forward is giving the public a chance to speak to it and to, to, to hear what they have to say. And, uh, you know, I think once, uh, once we have that information, uh, there may be, you know, changes that need to be made uh, both from the commercial side of things and from the individual side of things. So I would, I would say let's move it forward and get it out there and let folks take a look at it. Okay, thank you. Well, you kind of heard what I said a little while ago. I, you know, we can craft and craft, and, uh, and we're not going to satisfy everybody. Uh, I think we've come a long ways. We, uh, this is a great initial piece. Um, Again, I hear you, Joe. This, if there are changes to be addressed, it may be a long time down the road. I don't necessarily disagree with that as well. But I would concur with everybody else. So I think, uh, Debbie and John, if you don't mind, let's go ahead and uh, publish this uh, for public comment. Public hearing. Public hearing, I'm sorry, yes. And I'd like to commend the staff for taking a, a really technical, difficult thing that nobody knew anything about before. None of us did. Yeah, Probably still don't. But right. <laughs> I'm one of those. I'm, I am too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, 
All right, we'll move to the next item on our agenda for today, and that is public comment. Uh, would anyone like to come up and speak? And if so, again, identify yourself and where you live if you don't <coughs> mind. To limit it to three minutes. Morning. 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 My name is Jim Brown. I'm, uh, I live in South Buncombe County. And I guess I have some questions after today's discussion. <coughs> Does the sales and displays requirement uh, apply to billboards? No. So there's no requirement here on digital billboards or, or lights that are directed up on billboards? Well, the, the county sign ordinance does not allow digital but this applies to, to commercial and industrial development. Okay. Um, also, one other question on uh, uh, government buildings. So if I have a, a uh, school like, like on Cane Creek Road that uh, is built next to me, there are no requirements on uh, cutoff lighting and that sort of thing? Again, it would be commercial and industrial, so no, it wouldn't apply to government buildings, but we would certainly look at that. Yes, I, I think that having a school next to me, especially with uh, a soccer field or a tennis court where someone forgets to turn the lights off, I've seen other city ordinances and county ordinances that required uh, a certain time limit on how long lights could stay on on public courts and that sort of thing, I would mm -hmm. recommend that. And I also uh, share the concern about the, uh, uh, the dawn to dusk lights. Um, I wish there were a way that that could be addressed better. So uh, that's all the comments I have. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Brown. Much. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Christman. Good morning. morning. I'm Calvin Chrisman. I uh, live in the uh, Broad River area south of uh, Black Mountain. Um, two quick comments. I think uh, just to echo what, uh, what Jim just said on the dusted on uh, yard lights, I don't think you're quite there yet. Um, that is probably the most intrusive and the most bothersome to neighbors of anything that's out there. And I think you might want to consider that further before you finalize. Um, I kind of put that in the same category as uh, smoking ordinances. People sometimes object to those. As far as I'm concerned, feel free to smoke. Just don't exhale around me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, put any lights you want in your yard. Uh, just stop the light at the property line. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we need to be able to, to make that work. The only other comment I would give you is on your vehicular canopies, that 30-foot candles stands out. I understand it's initial versus, uh, versus maintained. Um, there are other ordinances out there, uh, and I don't know how they're all written, so I don't know whether they're all maintained or not. Woodfin has 20-foot candles, Black Mountain 24, um, Waynesville 15. So I think you're a little high there, and that's, uh, that's one of the uh, areas of concern, uh, it's written so that these are full cutoff under the canopies, which is good. But there's actually a danger in having these lights too high that people get in there, gas their car, their eyes adjust away from night vision, they get out on a, a county road that's not lit, and uh, they can't see a pedestrian, they can't see a parked car if its lights are off, whatever, for a period of time. So there is an issue there. I think you need to make sure that that 30 uh, translates back to a lower level of illumination. Um, I, I would think it might do better to get it down to, to 20 and uh, go from there. But um, I, I think that bears a little more investigation as well. But uh, you, uh, you put in a whole, lot of hard work on this, the staff has, and I would congratulate you on that and for struggling with uh, getting to the right place. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Anyone else? <laughs> well, I'm 
Dee Dee Styles and I live in Lytle Cove in Swannanoa. Uh, I also feel like that m most of the comments we've heard and most of the problems with the lighting are not from the commercial and uh, industrial, but from uh, people's yard lights and residential lighting. So, um, but I also understand that the, as a branch, as a, that, that the planning board serves at the behest of the county commissioners. And if they've asked you to do commercial and residential, then that's probably what they expect. But I think at the time that this, well, with public comment, once this is open for a public hearing and you get a lot more uh, requests for l limiting, um, the, especially dawn to dusk, uh, dusk to dawn light, that um, maybe the county commissioners will see it differently. And particularly if um, enough people attend the county commissioners meeting and ask for that, I think that's what, one of the things that's going to have to happen for the county commissioners to give you that um, charge to, mm -hmm. to work on that. So, yeah, I, I would like to see more control of residential lighting, but I understand that your, um, com your directions from the county commissioners was industrial. And so I think it's really good that you have included the residential, at least on the taller poles and put some cutoff regulations on that because at where I live, it's a real nuisance. The problem where we are at the bottom of the mountain is that even if the lights are have full cutoff and <coughs> they still, the light goes down, we still see it because we're under it. You know, we're below it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's any solution to that. Okay, thank you, Didi. Okay, I think that takes care of the public comment period, so I'll close that item on our agenda. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Thank you, Mr. Hutchins. Second. <laughs> Got a second? Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, okay, thank you so much for your time. See you December 5th. Maybe. <laughs>